chosen, I am free, I am living for eternity, free now forever, you pick me up, turn me around, you set my feet on solid ground, yours now forever. Crossroads. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us today. If this is your first time at Crossroads, we would love to meet with you. So if you would, fill Happy birthday, Crossroads! Woo! Party like it's 1999! 
35! Oh, yeah. Party! Happy birthday! Wow, a lot of amazing and awesome things are happening here at the Life at Crossroads. But another thing that we are excited about is that we are launching a new app today called The Table. But hey, guy with the hat, I thought we already had an amazing app. It was great! Well, this is true, but you can delete that old app and look up My Crossroads by Crossroads Church and download the new one for free on your Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. This app will help us pray more for each other, serve where there is a need, and connect our church family 24-7. This app will help us live church together. So if you have any questions about this app, you can email Logan Nanny. Please don't. Email communications at mycrossroads.co. The Bible tells us that when we go into the water in baptism, it's a picture of our old self being buried with Jesus. And when we come out of the water, it's a picture of us being raised anew in Christ's resurrection power. When we're baptized, we are publicly declaring, I belong to Jesus Christ and I want everyone to know unashamedly that He's my Lord and Savior. When we do that, the Bible says that Jesus stands for us in heaven and says, I want everyone to know unashamedly that this is my child and they belong to me. At Crossroads, we're passionate about following Jesus' example to be baptized and His command to do so. If you've never been baptized into the faith, we invite you to take this important step of faith. If you desire to be baptized for the first time or to reaffirm your baptism, I'll meet you in the waters. So if you need more information about the events, groups, classes, or just anything about Crossroads, you can check out our recently new and improved Crossroads website, mycrossroads.co. It's a good morning, isn't it? It's always a good morning when we come together as the body of Christ. And we serve a good God. What better way than to dig into His scriptures, to dig into His word, and discover who we are in Him created to be worshipers, right? Created to be worshipers. There's a scripture that says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every day. And so just receive that this morning. The beautiful thing about being a Christ follower is you can come before him anytime, anywhere. You don't have to get all prettied up. He takes you just as you are, calls you his beloved. So that's the God we worship this morning. I just invite you with all your heart, all your soul, through our songs this morning, through the prayers, through the word that you hear later, just to let yourself be received in his arms. God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. It's a new day and you are doing a new thing. Lord, take us deeper than we've gone before. Show us your promises. Show us your truths. We love you. We honor. We glorify you.
the kindness you have poured out grace you brought me out of darkness you filled me with peace and give her mercy you're my help in time of need lord i can't help but see Yes, today. 
promises are yes and amen. Yes, all your promises are yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes, God, so we believe in those promises this morning. God, we believe in the goodness that you have for our life. God, in the direction that you're taking us in, not only individually, but as a church. So God, we just say yes, and we say amen. God, we say yes to you. God, we say yes to family. We say yes to your spirit. We say yes to love. We say yes to grace, to mercy. Yes and amen. God, we believe in you. We rest our hope in you, God. Everything we have, we rest in you. So we say yes and amen. I'm going to take time and do the offering now if the ushers would come up front. Sometimes it's tough giving away all that hard work all week, doesn't it? A little 10% piece and give up the hard work. And But I tell you, because we do it, we're blessed because of it. It's not only the people that are blessed by us tithing and giving and allowing the church to do what the Lord has set it up to do, but we ourselves have a blessing too, so it's good things. So we're just going to pray over over that offering right now. So God, we thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you for the work that we get to do. God, you set up a way for us to provide provide for ourselves and for our family and God we just want to enjoy that there's a lot of things within work that comes into play but God ultimately we want to work for you God we want to do the things we do for you so God this small portion that you at that you have asked for us to give you in return God we just we offer that to you with hope God with happiness God with joy and God, with a thankful heart. And then God, on top of that, we just ask you to multiply. We ask you to bless. We ask you to do what only you can do. Because God, we know your ways. They're higher than ours. They're greater than, greater than ours. So God, we look to that. We rest our faith and our hope in the goodness that you're going to do with what you've asked in return for us. And for the 100% that we get to work with, God, we thank you for that. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, Crossroads. I'd like to welcome all those who are watching online right now around the city and around the country and even around the, the world. We're, we're blessed that you're part of this. And, and I want to say also happy birthday, Crossroads. This is 21 years. That means we are now legal as a church to, you know, and, and I don't know what that means, but uh, that doesn't mean we're going to change the, the beverage content in the cafe, I don't think in any way, but I uh, do want you to know, you know, 21 years, uh, when you say you're, you're legal, now, I mean, we're legal, I think, to do even greater things, that God... God constantly is saying that he's going to take us from, uh, from glory to glory and greater things to greater things. And I think we're legal to love God more and, and, and worship God stronger and, and grow deeper with him and, and do greater exploits with him and for him and, and things. So I think that's a, I, that's a neat thing about, you know, just what we're a part of. But yeah, I thought about 21 years. And 21, uh, when you're 21 years old, you're, you're, you're starting to mature. You're not a little kid anymore. You're not even a teenager anymore. There's just a maturity thing that starts to take place. You're also, but you, but you still are, are not set in your ways. And, and you still, there's just a wonder and excitement and just a, a joy of, what, uh, of what's coming down the pike. And I think that's really what God's calling us to be as a church. I think God's calling us to, to grow in, in our depth and even become more mature as, a, as believers. And I think God's making our roots go down deeper. And, and our faith to be stronger. And, and also, I really believe that, that he's, but we're not stuck in our way still. We still don't say, you know, we've never done it that way before. We still love, you know, the God's stretching us and encouraging us and, and calling us to new things. And, and there's still that wonder and excitement and, and what's, you know, what is God up to? And, and there really is just that, that thrill right now. If God's up to really something big in our church. And I'm excited about that. I can't wait for the story. Can't wait for the other things that, that God's doing in our, uh, in our midst. And, you know, I was, I was looking at, we were looking at a, a, a picture of the church when we first started. That's the very first meeting that we ever had at, at, at Crossroads. There were 35 people. Now, get this, though. I was thinking back at that. And at least nine of those people have served in full-time Christian ministry. And at least 14 of those people have served in, on the foreign mission field. Is that not incredible out of 35 people? And what that tells me is we've always had a passion for those outside of our walls. I think that's a big reason why God has blessed us as a church. When, when we put the, the Great Commission on our, on our back wall, we really mean that. that, uh, that, that we, because here's one of our core values. One of our core values is lost people matter to God. We really believe that. And because they matter to God, they matter to us as, uh, as, as well. And there's another core value that we have is, is that prayer changes everything. We really believe in the power of prayer in our, in our church. And, and some people ask if I would share the testimony of, uh, of really how the, how the church acquired the land, because I share that sometimes in the, uh, in the uh, Discover Crossroads class or Taste of Crossroads class. And, and so uh, what, what happened was this. We had, there were three ladies that owned this property. This was the very property that we wanted of any property in, in Concord. This is the ones that, that was most on our heart. And so I had addressed the three ladies that owned this property, and they said no, they weren't interested in selling. And they were savvy businesswomen, these, uh, these three ladies. And we went and looked for every place else and just tried to look in, at, at different places we could, uh, we, we, could, you know, we could purchase. And it seemed like any frontage property to, to a, a major intersection and things was, was between $35,000 and $100,000 an acre, which was way, 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 way outside of our, our, our price range. So, uh, so what we did is we put green dots on our watches, and every time we saw the the green dot, we would be reminded to pray for the for our land. And sure enough, for for weeks and weeks and even months, we prayed for that God would give us a, our our own promised land, our own property. And 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 so I, I really felt that I was supposed to address those ladies again. So I I called them up and said, "Would you give me ten minutes of your time?" And they are they're sweet, wonderful ladies, and they said, "Sure, we'd be happy to." So uh, I went there and I, I said this. I said. I really believe that God can use your resources of this property and our dream, and we can transform this city for the kingdom of God. And they said, we're very cordial and said, thank you. And, you know, we'll get back in touch with you. And about, and again, we're praying like crazy. And about, about seven to 10 days later, they call me up and said, we want to sell you the property. Now, remember, these ladies were savvy businesswomen for $19,000 an acre. And, and just an incredible thing of a gift of God. And then, but that was, um, that, we, uh, that was 16 acres. And we wanted, we knew we were wanted between 20 and 25 acres to, to do what God wanted us to do. So again, we went right back to prayer. We went back to the green dots and prayed that God would, uh, would give 
give us more, more property. And so Niblock Development, which is the development company uh, right behind the church, they called us up out of the blue and said that, uh, that they were denied zoning because they needed an ec- another exit. And so they said, would you be willing to trade property uh, with us? And, and long story short, we traded one half acres of our land for six and a half acres of their land. And we, they did all the development to get up there, which saved us over a quarter million dollars. So only God you know, could, could give you six acres of land and, and save you a quarter of a million dollars in the process. Is that not cool? So we've always believed in, in, in prayer, and that's, one of our, uh, and, and that's one of our core values. But another core value, and the one I want to talk about today, the one I focus, want to focus on is, is that uh, we are a family. As a church, we are a family, and we're better, we're better together. The Ecclesiastes says this, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If they fall down, they can help each other up. But pity those who fall down and have no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. But how can any one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And right there at the the very start, two are better than one. It says straight out of Scripture, we're better together than we are than we are apart. You know, I was reminded of a of a story that happened in 1904 at the at the. Uh, World's Fair in St. Louis. I guess it was blistering hot. And so there was this, uh, and people lined up for anything that would keep them cool. And there was a, an, an ice cream stand by a guy by the name of Arnold Fornichus. And, and what happened is there were so many people lined up, the line went forever, that they ran, ran out of, of paper cups. So he's, he's about to lose a ton of business. And the guy next to him, who was a, uh, a, uh, a guy from Damascus, Syria, he was a, a pastry chef. He was making these, th- this confection, this sweet confection, wafer-thin confection. And he saw what was going on and got an idea. So what he did is, is he formed that into a cornucopia and he put it in some sugar and then he handed it to, to Arnold. Now, Arnold didn't understand what was going on, but so, so Ernest, the this, this, uh, this Syrian, what he did is he took it and then he put some ice cream in it. And suddenly Arnold got a, a, an idea as well. He, he saw what the, what the possibilities were. So one guy, Ernest, is making all this confection, making in these, into these, uh, these little cornucopias, these edible bowls. And meanwhile, Arnold is putting ice cream in them. And that was the hit of the 1904 uh, State Fair. It was called the cornucopia, uh, the, the State Fair cornucopia. And now we know them as something else. Else. We know them as ice cream, ice cream cones, still pretty much of a major hit, wouldn't you say? Mother Teresa said this, you can do what I cannot do. I can do what you cannot do. Together, we can do great things. Now, I'm not administrative at all, and that is an understatement. To say I'm not administrative is like, you know, is an understatement like saying elephants are not good at surfing, right, or something. It's, I'm just not good at that. But there are people in our church that are fantastic at it, and together, we're better together. There are people in our church uh, on staff and in leadership that are fantastic visionaries. There are others who are fantastic at, at the details. And here's the, the thing, if you have nothing but visionaries, what you're gonna have, you're gonna have a, a ton of great ideas and nobody to make those things happen. But then if you're just a, a, you know, the, into the details, you may be able to make things happen, but you're not gonna have a lot of, uh, of ideas and especially ones that you take a, a leap of faith, but you put those together, you put visionaries with people that can make it happen and we've got an incredible, incredible church with, uh, of, of, of taking ideas and making them a reality. You know, you'll see people up here, you see people in the, in the, under the spotlight and everything, but unless there's people behind the scenes, uh, we're going to look pretty stupid. We're, you're not going to be able to see us on the big screen because there's not people on the, uh, on the, the videos or upstairs, and you're not going to be able to hear me because the people not on the sound. And, and when you came in, you wouldn't have been loved up on by greeters and ushers, and you wouldn't have been able to take your kids to a place where they are loved up on and taught. And, and there, you know, I could go on and on and on. In other words, we're better together than we are apart. We need each other, and together we can do some incredible things. And for whatever reason, I thought about a mission trip that I that I went on several years ago, and I just thought about the, the, the power of, of unity and everybody doing their thing. 
And it was, it was the last night I was in Brazil, and we were in, in Rio de Janeiro in a very, in a slum of Rio de Janeiro. And, and I wanted to go out on the streets. I love doing the street evangelism. I love talking to people on the street. And I got about, about four or five of the guys that, that went with us from the, from the team. And, and so I went straight up to there's, you know, a guy who's an obvious leader in the town, town square, and, and everybody else is kind of hovering around him. He's definitely a, you know, a gang leader there. And I went up to him and started talking to him. And, and this is, and, and so, um, um, some things started being weird. Like, first of all, he started trying to pimp me off on some, some you know, girl there, young, young lady, and she gets her shirt about halfway off. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what I'm here for. I'm not, I'm not, trust me, I'm not, that's, that's what I'm about. So we start talking and everything. And, and there was one guy who was, who was uh, drunk and he's really, he's really distracting everybody. And then he starts picking on a, a 16 year old guy that's in our, our group. And, and things were looking, you know, getting a little weird. There's only a couple of times I've ever felt really uncomfortable that things could get out of hand on a mission trip, and this was, this was one of them. So uh, what, beautifully, this one guy just took the drunk guy away and just moved, removed him from the, from the rest of the group, and, and that was beautiful. That was incredible. And then, I, uh, and, and then this one, there just started to be a little heatedness between us and these, these guys, and I said, go get the translator. I said to one guy, run and get your tr- the translator right away. So he ran, and the translator came back, and then the translator started getting into some, some stuff, and I said, I, I grabbed him by the cheeks, and I said, only translate what I'm about to say. Do you understand? And he said, yeah. So, so I just started talking to these guys and, and they said, what can do, what do you have possibly, can you relate to us? We do drugs and you've, you know, you've never done drugs in your life. And I said, absolutely, I actually have. And so is this guy right over here. And suddenly for whatever reason, being stupid way back when gave us an opportunity. And suddenly there's 30, 40 guys that are crowded around wanting to hear everything that we have to say. And so, so, and we got to share the gospel with these guys, and every one of them came to faith in, in, in Jesus Christ. And what was beautiful is that, is you've got this whole, you know, every, the whole body of Christ working together. You have one guy that all he did was get this one guy away, and it was beautiful, and it made it where we could, could have a discussion. One guy's praying, one guy's translating, two guys are, are, are sharing their faith, and together we saw the kingdom of God come down on that, that group of people as everybody just did their part. You know, I said, I think I shared this before, but uh, a few years ago, the, the winner of the 1961 Daytona 500 came to the church, and I believe it was the first time he's been at church in 40, in 40 years. He was also the 1966 winner of the, of the Coca-Cola Classic in, in Charlotte. And they introduced me to him and everything, and they, they asked, they said, are you coming to the race today? And I said, I said... Everybody tells me they're going to take me to the race. They never take me to the race. And he said, well, you're going to sit next to me in the race today. So I got to sit in the booth next to him, and it was fun. We had a great time, hit it off. And, and then I went up to the mountains uh, a few months later, and, and I knew that he was uh, summering up there. So I called him up and said, hey, you want to go out to dinner? So we went out to dinner, and I said, uh, I said how long have you been a Christian? He said, I'm not a Christian. I don't even know what it means to be a Christian. And I said, well, we're going to have a discussion is what we're going to have. And he said, are you going to convert me? I said, I'm going to answer your question. And long story short, he came to faith in Jesus Christ. He bowed his knee to, to Christ that, that evening. And, and he died just a, a few months ago. And I went to his funeral down in, in, in Florida. And I was sitting next to a lady, and she happened to be talking about him and said, you know, he used to be giving me the hardest time about being a Christian. He used to call me a Bible thumper and all this stuff, and, and he used to give me the hardest time. And then all of a sudden, about a year and a half ago, he just stopped giving me a hard time and, and was actually nice about it and everything. I said, do you know he came to faith in Jesus Christ? And she goes, oh, that's wonderful. She said, I've been praying for him for 20 years for him to come to faith in, in Christ. And so what I'm doing is I'm sitting next to the person that's prayed for him, I was sitting next to the other person that all he did was invite him to cry. I mean, invite him to church where he was going to hear the gospel, get introduced and everything. And, and all he did was an invitation. And then you had the person that had the privilege of, of putting it all together. That if any one of those three weren't doing their job, it wouldn't have happened. And all three working together as a team, we see a guy come to faith in Jesus Christ uh, even, even, you know, a year, a year before he, comes to, uh, he, he goes to, to be with God. Is that not a cool thing? In a healthy family, every single person is important, and we need to, to realize that. Uh, Romans 12, 4 and 5 says this, just as there are many parts of our, to our body, so it is with Christ's body. For we each have a different work to do. Did you hear that? We each, every single person in this room, you have a work to do according to the word of God. And, and here's the other thing is each one of us needs each other. 
In the body, we're all, we're, we're, we're unified as a, in the human body. Every part is important. And in the Christian body, every part is important. You may say, you know, I'm just a liver in the body of Christ. Try doing life without your liver. Somebody may say, I'm just a thumb. I try doing, try doing life without your thumb. I'm just an eye. Try doing that. I, every single part is really important. And that means two things. That means that nobody is, should, should just be sitting around doing nothing because you're crucial to where God wants to take this church. And also know this, that, that you are important in, in there, that God has incredible plans for you, that, that you are vital to seeing this, this church be everything that God wants it to be. So you're important and don't forget that. And we need each other as, uh, as, as well. There are two ways that we make each other better. The first one is to challenge each other. That the Bible says this, that as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens the other. Have you ever sharpened a knife, you know, with one of the, the a wet stone or something like that? What do you do? You go with the grain and you go what? Against the grain as, uh, as well. You go with the grain and you go against the grain. And, and, and we all love it when we go with the grain, right? I mean, that's a lot of fun going with the grain when people agree with you, when people see things exactly the way you see things, when they, you know, when they never give you a hard time, anything like that. We love that and we actually need that. I mean, that's one part of sharpening. But the other thing is when we go against the grain, I mean, that's, there's people that rub us the wrong way, aren't there? There's people that don't see things the way you do. There's people the body as well, right? And things so, but, but it's when we, it's, it's when we realize, I wonder what would happen if we just saw those people as even a gift from God and saw even those people that rub us the wrong way that God is using those people to sharpen us as believers. And also, you, you know, anybody that, is, that lifts weights, they know that the way you, you get stronger is through resistance. It's not through when everything's going, you know, gravity's working with you. It's when everything's going against you. It's the resistance. And in the same way, I think God uses people that the resistance in our life and those people that maybe even this week bugged the snot out of you that they could have been the very people that God is using to strengthen your faith and to sharpening you as a, as a believer. The Bible says, as, oh, the other way is this, is through encouragement. You know, uh, the Olympics just got over a few, you know, a few days ago. And one thing about the Olympics is the home, the home place, usually that home country, usually the, uh, the medal count spikes like crazy in that home con- country. Why is that? It's the same athletes going against the same athletes. Why is there such a spike in the medal count in favor of those countries? I think it's because of this. There they have the encouragement. They have the people that are applauding them. There they have the people that are encouraging them to, to go. And you even hear the home, the home person when they're swimming, when they're running, when they're jumping, when they're whatever, there's just that explosion of the home crowd and everything. And God created the church to be that home field advantage. God created this place to be where no matter what else you get in the rest of life, that here you should feel the encouragement, that here you should feel the attaboy and atta girl, and you can make it and, and you've got this. And and God's behind you, and God has great plans for you, and those things of just encouragement to go on. You know, uh, yesterday I did a 62-mile bike ride with the, and and this is, I I say this because, first of all, I'm so grateful for that, because uh, think about four four weeks ago, I was in a cast, and could barely, I'd been on a couch for about, you know, about six, seven weeks and things, and I'm just so thankful to have been able to do that. That is not a little thing. That is just a God thing. I'm so grateful for his healing power. And, and, and something else is, is, if you've ever been in a, a race like that in a, or a ride like that in a, on a bike, you really need each other. You don't want to go out by yourself because for 62 miles, you've got the wind against you, and it is tough, tough, tough. But when you have a group of people, even one or two people to go around, what happens is you shield each other from the wind and, and sometimes one person takes the brunt of the wind and you're, you're back there and you're not getting the whole brunt and then you, then you switch places and you're getting it and they're not getting it and, 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 and then you always have people to look after you, to take care of you. There was one, one lady that uh, her, uh, her bike started breaking down and she was by the side and other people stopped to help her and make sure she could get back, back on. The guy that I was with who's an incredible, an incredible incredible shape. Uh, I've never seen him hap- this happen to him, but he got started getting cramps and several times he had to, to stop at the side and, and I, I had to, you know, water. He needed hydration and I was hopefully encouraging him. And this same guy a few years ago, man, did he ever do that for me? Because I, I had not one, not two, but three flat tires in the same ride, which is hard to do when you only have two tires, right? 
But it, so, and he was there helping me out and he's the one that got me back on there. And it's just that time where sometimes I'm on the side of the road and I need help. And sometimes they're on the side of the road and they need help. And together we're going to get through this thing. Together we're going to encourage each other. And there is that, that a guy just go, you know, uh, by me the other day saying, hey, you know, how you doing? Everything good? And, every, and just where we encourage each other in, uh, in that. So, and the, uh, the Bible says this too, encourage one another daily. That's Hebrews 3.13. Is there anybody here that would say, I get way too much encouragement in this life? Anybody? Anybody that said, please do not encourage me anymore. I've got enough encouragement to last me for a lifetime. Of course not. We need, each other, we need encouragement as much as we need water, as much as we need air, as much as we need anything. We need encouragement in this world, don't we? Uh, and, and in the same way, it says this. It says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage each other daily as, uh, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, I want to give a background there. There were some people in that culture that were in church all the time, that nothing, wild horses couldn't keep them away. There were other people in there that would only be in, in, at, at church services occasionally, and there were others that, that were missing altogether. That was that culture. You ever remind you of any culture that you know of? You know, again, we're the same way, aren't we? And the, notice what the Bible says. He's saying God Almighty is saying through the writer of Hebrews, stop missing church. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment from God. He also is one of the Ten Commandments. He says, honor, you know, uh, honor the, the Sabbath day and keep it, and keep it holy. In other words, he's saying, you know, in the, the history of what that is, is saying, we're not to work on one, one day a week, but also we're to gather together as believers and encourage each other, support each other, where we get a, a message that will, that will take us hopefully through a week and encourage us. We'll hear, we'll hear music. And there's something that happens when we worship together and, and we are inspired by each other. We're strengthened by each other. And notice the word there. Don't miss that word. Don't give up meeting together as some are in the, what was the word? Habit. And it really is, isn't it? I mean, we can get in the habit of, of, of being in church on a regular basis. We can get out of the habit so incredibly easy, right? I mean, even, even summer can get us out of the habit and knock us out of that and things. And, and one little thing with, you know, doing something around the house or doing this, and suddenly we realize, man, it's been, it's been eight weeks. I haven't been at church or three weeks. And man, what's going on? And we can get out of the habit, but here's the good news. We can get right back in the habit and start a new habit starting, uh, starting this week. Something else is we are stronger together. There's a, a, a county fair was having a, a horse uh, pulling contest to, to see the strength of some horses. And, you know, those big old hunking, you know, uh, not even Clydesdales, the big, big horses that are bigger than that. And, and one horse, uh, the, the one that won the competition, could pull 4,500 pounds, if you can imagine. That's over two tons. And the second place horse could pull, do 4,400 pounds. So they decided to harness them together to see what they could do. Now, you would think that would be, you know, 4,500. 500 and 4,400, they could do about 8,900. But together, they could pull over 14,000 pounds, seven tons working together. And that's the same thing. We can do more together than we can ever do apart. We are stronger together than we are the sum of our, uh, of our, our parts. And I was, um, I was one time uh, a few years ago, I happened to be the passenger in a, a really bad snowstorm that we had in North Carolina. It's probably the worst that I remember. And I remember looking out the window and seeing tree after tree after tree that was just splintered and, and broken by the weight of the, uh, of the snow and ice. And then I was looking at some others and I'm thinking, they're okay. And it was one of those times that God just tapped me on the shoulder and I was wondering, okay, what's the difference between all these trees that are splintered and all these trees that are able to, to, to stand? And I, I realized that the ones that were splintered were all the ones that are out by themselves on, in the fields. And the ones that were together, they were in, in, in groves and they were able to hold and support each other up, that each one was kind of supporting the weight of the others. And I really believe that's the picture that God has for us as, a, as believers. There are times, let's just face it, there are times where, where the blizzard 
blizzard of life can get us so down and the weight of this world can, can, can make us where we're despaired or discouraged or frustrated or hurt or worried or scared or whatever it is. And we can be so weighed down by this world. And, and, but when we're side by side, one can pick the other up and one can help the other and encourage the other together. You know, people may be going through the same uh, a struggle at the same time. That's why we have ministries like the, like the, the, the new one that's starting up is the mother of, uh, of angels where, where p- women have lost uh, a, a child and, and, and all of them together, they can support each other and encourage each other and, and where we have things like, uh, like grief support and we've had, had a divorce care and things like that where people going through the same struggle and, and they can encourage and help each other through that and especially people who have made it to the other side. And here's things, uh, Galatians 6 says this. Now, watch the start of this and the end of this because they seem to contradict each other. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If any of you think you are something when you are nothing, you deceive yourselves. Each of you should test your own actions. Then you can take pride in yourself without comparing yourself to someone else. For each of you should, each of you should carry your own burden. Oh, wait a minute. Carry each other's burden. Carry your own burden, which... Which one is it, right? It's actually both, isn't it? And this is one of those times it's real good to know the original language because the word for for burden that you're supposed to carry your own burden, think of a backpack with some books in it. That's the burden, and we can all carry that, right? But the other burden, the, the word for that is think of a piano. Okay, think of a piano and you're going, okay, I can want to carry that all I want to, but there's no way I'm going to get that thing off the ground. We need other people to help us in that way. And the same way we help each other. There's there's some burdens we have to carry. We should carry our own burdens on some some things. But there's other things it's too much for us to handle. And I thank God, I thank God so much for my brothers and sisters that are in this room and and, and the encouragement that you've given me through the years and and everything. I just want to say this. I want to say thank you for being such an awesome church, 21 years. And there's people that you've been here from the very, very, very beginning. And there's others that this is your first week here and wherever you are in the spectrum of that, Thank you for your prayers for this church. Thank you for your, your, your ministry in this church. Thank you for your, your giving to make it where we're able to do these things. Thank you for all that you do to make this church uh, a church that has impacted the, the, the region and impacted the, the world. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Listen to these, this promise from Jesus. These are the words of Jesus. And, you know, you know, um, when, I was, when we were singing down there that, that all of God's promises are yes and amen, we just sang that song. And I thought to myself of so many promises that God had made, my mind was just going, and that's another great reason to get in the word of God, where you can, you can bring those promises back. But I was thinking of those, and I'm thinking, God, some of those just sound too good to be true, you know, especially when you're going through a tough time. Someone says, and it's like God said, if you say something, do you mean it? And I thought to myself, Yeah. I mean it. When I say something, I mean, I want to be a man of my word. And he almost chastised me and said, do you think you're any more honest than I am? You know, when God says and he makes a promise, he means it. And here's one of the things he says. I promise you that when any two of you agree on, uh, about something you're praying for, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Whenever two or three of you come together in my name, I am there with you. And here's the thing that's amazing to me. I mean, God is always with us. There's, those are some of the promises in Bi- the Bible. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you in Hebrews. In Matthew, he says, surely I'm with you to always, even to the end of the age. God's always with us. But according to Jesus Christ right here, when we are together, God is with us in a special way that he's not with us in a way that we're just alone. I mean, that is one of the reasons that I love to gather together and I love to worship with you and I love to even do small groups and things because something happens when God's people are together together that doesn't happen when you're just alone. Another thing is he says that God answers individual prayers. I thank God that he answers my prayers and your prayers as individuals, but there is something so powerful when we pray together for something. When we pray in unity, that's one of the reasons we have a prayer team, because something happens when God's people are praying together for something, and it happens in just even a bam shang way that may not happen in another way. So we're also safer together. It says, 
Uh, but how can, uh, though they may be overpowered, one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. If you've ever watched the Discovery Channel, you know something. You know the predators go after certain types of animals. They will, first of all, they will go after the young, won't they? And there's a sermon there, isn't there? That that's one of the reasons we try everything we have to have a kick tail children's program and youth program and nursery and Sunday school and all that because, the, because we know Satan is after the kids and that's a great reason why to have have your, your kids involved in, in that. Another thing is they go after the, the sick. They go after those who are hurting, and that's why we, we want to gather together, and it's okay to hurt, but man, hurt, hurt in the church so people can love up and care about you. And there's also, they go after the isolated, don't they? There's a word for animals that are by themselves in the Serengeti. It's called lunch, right? Because if you get alone, you get isolated, you are going to get picked off. That's what's going to happen. So, um, you know, I, here's a, a picture that I took of some zebras a few years ago. And, and something that I, I, I real found out is that, that zebras, when they are together, they're pretty safe because the lions will see them as one big unit. Lions, especially with the stripes, they see that as one big animal. Uh, but then if, the, uh, if the, the, the zebra goes apart from, by itself, then what you see is that sees an individual animal and that's when the, the lionesses will go after, uh, after that animal. The same thing again, I say this, if you get isolated, you're gonna get picked off. You're not the exception. You stay away from the body of Christ, you stay away from fellowship and it's only a matter of time so you're, you're just sitting duck for, for, for the enemy to come in and do all sorts of things in, uh, in your life. And that's why God says this in 1 Peter 5. He says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of struggling. One big way we overcome that, we have to realize Satan is on the prowl and together, we're stronger. Together, we're, uh, we're safer. You know, I asked some people, what are the qualities of a family? What makes a family? And here's some of the things that, that you said. We never, ever, ever disagree. No, I'm just kidding. Somebody said this, we don't always agree, but we work through our problems. We're there for each other. We forgive each other. We love unconditionally. We make memories we have fun and we laugh together. We share life together. We help each other succeed and fulfill God's purpose. We support each other through, through our achievements and our failures. We defend each other. We appreciate each other's differences and we're fiercely loyal to each other despite our frustrations with each other. It's a great description of family and that's the great description of what God's designed for the church is to be as, uh, as well. And I wanna end with a, a story. That there was a, a lady, two ladies that were in a nursing home. Each one had had a stroke. Ruth was, was she was paralyzed on her, on her right side and, uh, and Martha was paralyzed on her left side. So this, uh, the person who's in charge of the activities at the nursing home, he got a, a genius idea and put the ladies together, but each one played the piano before. And he put them together and put a sheet of music in between them and said, Ruth, play with your left hand. Margaret, pick, uh, do with your, your right hand. And together they started to play and at first it was really, really awkward, but after a while and after practice, they began to make beautiful music together. In fact, each one said they could play together far better than they ever could have done apart when they, before the, the stroke. And to me, again, that's the picture of, of what God intends the church to be. There's th just like Mother Teresa said, there's things I can do that you can't do. There's things that you can do that I can't do. Together, we're gonna do some great things. And God puts that sheet of music in front of us and he says, go at it. See what you guys can do to, to, together. And shoulder to shoulder, guys, side to side, hand in hand, um, we're gonna continue by the grace of God to make an influence in this city, to make an influence in this country, to make an influence in this world. And I pray, here's my prayer, I pray that whatever God has done, and God's done incredible things in this church and through this church in the last 21 years, 
And I pray that, that what we've seen is just the tip of the iceberg of what God wants to do. I pray for greater depth. I pray for greater love for God. I pray for deeper worship. I pray for, for more influence in the world, for more souls to come to faith in Christ, for more people to be strengthened in their faith, for more people to be reconciled. We pray for all those, uh, those things. And I really pray that this is the greatest year we've ever had to this point in the history of our church that God does amazing things that blow us out of the water as together, shoulder to shoulder and hand in hand, we worship and serve God together. Amen.